We've got a case of MREs from 1993. Got nothing to worry about with these. They were climate controlled. A cool room cellar. No fluctuation in temperatures. Look at that. Packed by Sopaco Incorporated. Mullen, South Carolina. Let's check it out. Menu number one, pork with rice and barbecue sauce. Here's menu seven, beef stew. Beef stew is still around. One of two original menus. The other is spaghetti. This is chicken and rice, menu 11. This one's no longer produced. Neither is that pork with rice. A scallop potatoes with ham, menu 12. This is menu 10, tuna with noodles. Oh wow, menu number nine, pork chow mein. First year for it. Menu eight, ham slice. Menu number five, spaghetti with meat and sauce. Oh boy, menu six, beef frankfurters. Here's a real beaut. Menu number four, omelet with ham. Menu number three, chicken stew. And here's the last one, corned beef hash. Masterpiece menus. Okay, so there's everything laid out. Omelet with ham for breakfast. Pork chow mein for lunch. And then spaghetti with meat and sauce for dinner. All right, let's check out that omelet with ham. You can barely even read that thing. No wonder they changed it. Ran up till 1995, that old brown bag pouch. Pick out a ration and never know what you're getting. Okay, so we're off the bat. 30 year old Tabasco sauce. Looking that bright. This is a good sign. It's probably still fresh. Everything. Or close to it. Oatmeal cookie bar. Yeah, there's the omelet. Some MRE crackers. There's the FRH. Look at that. First generation flameless ration heater. They were around in 1990, 91, but it'd be 50 in a container and issued separately. This is the first generation for being in an MRE hasn't leaked it looks good might still work cocoa beverage powder sugar-free diet soft drink mix lemonade didn't harden up M&Ms and they're not brittle they haven't broken down the pack will end up expanding it'll get puffy and it'll just be like powder and candy shellac rattling there's like no rattle that's awesome mre spoon accessory packet a look at that sometimes 93s will have the clear pack this looks like the end of those tri laminate packaged accessory packs that last nearly forever i mean if stored properly the coffee and chewing gum inside will be preserved Look at this apple jelly. Nice. And then potatoes au gratin. That's looking pretty good. All right, let's get the sat on to a tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by heating up that main and potatoes au gratin. Oh, wow. Look at that. The retort pouch looks outstanding. No issues. No puncture holes or swelling. It's just glue. You gotta look over the whole thing. And that looks fantastic. The potatoes are gratin. 
also looks good. All right, flameless reaction heater. Slow or no activation. We're gonna keep out of here. The thing kind of work in the magnesium and iron and sodium mixture can go inert over time. Making a little noise, but there's no heat, not yet. We might be boiling these in the pouch for about five to eight minutes. <laughs> that is the most delayed and bizarre flameless ration heater. The exothermic reaction failed. The anti-foaming agent that was added also failed. Look at this. We'll just pretend that flameless ration heater worked. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by checking out that accessory packet. I want some coffee. This is what you're supposed to do. Give it a good whiff. Hmm. Yeah, those old accessory packets in the brown tri-laminate oil package. Oh man, these are great. The smell, it's like an industrial power plant office room. And some coffee. And the rest of it, give you everything you need. Toilet paper, matches, chewing gum, creamer, sugar, four grams of iodized salt, and the best of the best, wet nap, moist towelette. By Nice Pack Products Incorporated out of Orangeburg, New York. Nice. Okay, so then I get this oatmeal cookie bar look. These things. Oh wow. It smells like a buttered oatmeal cookie. Not for the MMs. Best before January 24th, 1994. They should be fine. There we go. They look like Reese's Pieces in there. They smell pretty good. Pre-blue. They had the brown and even the green looks different. Vintage M&Ms that look pretty well preserved here. Hold on. It's like a mocha caramel brown color. Wow. Those are not just preserved, they are different. Tastes like a different formula. I can't believe it. Freshest like vintage M&Ms I've ever had. It's a more rich and smooth milk chocolate. It's a nice little hiss. These crackers hold up. Look at this. They maintain their shape, but they're not salted. That's okay. Wow. Well baked. They smell fresh. That era of MRE cracker has such a pronounced malted barley smell. Fantastic. They're not falling apart. They were tough. They don't make them like they used to. Okay. Let's see here. This coffee. Mildly acidic. Let's check out the potatoes of gratin. Will the cheese be sour? Will it be dark and oxidized? Absolutely fine. This is old school gratin. It's not the slices, it's the cubes. 
ever so slight, sharp cheddar. Beautiful color. For its age, that's almost unbelievable. I mean, usually this is a dark brown by this point. It is about as good as it gets. Now it's time for the omelet with ham. Thermostabilized. Mmm, smelling savory. Ooh, nice juice. Let's make some hot chocolate. lasts forever and smells kind of acidic it's strange it's the vitamin C and vitamin enrichment that they add to it B vitamins this stuff is enriched What you want to do is this cracker you want to save at least half of it really you want to save that piece too this is about all you can have for the apple jelly wow look at that like a, a fluffy egg omelet. Hmm. Aseptic preparation and filling to the thermostabilized retort pouch. Thermal stabilization. It is irradiated meat and the containers that they fill them in, the entire environment that it's under in its packing and packaging is sterile. Additional nitrates, sodium erythrobate, further ensures sterility over time. Not bad. Tastes normal for the most part. No bitterness, no numbing or anything like that. It is on point. Let's follow it up with a nice apple jelly on a cracker. It tastes like apple jelly on buttered toast. It's phenomenal, especially after the omelet. All right. Cute potatoes are quite good. They have nice chewable texture. They're not mushy. Hmm. Tastes like chips with a nacho cheese dip. The cheese sauce is rather thin. It could use just a little additional modified food starch thickener. Oatmeal cookie bar. Let's get the side without apple jelly. Dry. That's what you got this hot chocolate for. That saves you, because these things are dry and thirst-provoking like no other. That's why they called them sawdust bars back in the day, because if you had to chew one of these things... Hmm. 
this is probably more breakfast than most would be bargaining for. An omelet, cheese sauce, I don't know, it's a little heavy. Can't imagine getting caught with it. And it's cold if it's heated up. And if you only ever have to eat it once or twice, it's probably pretty good. Let's look at this ham. Reminds me of the K-Ration ham and eggs. Hmm. Instead of being the same exact thing in a cylindrical can, they can now call it an omelet by flattening it out and putting it in a retort pouch. Well, that's almost like a pate on crackers effect. This is a lot more humane. MRE crackers, saving Maine since 1980. Hmm. That's right, 1980. 81 was not the first year for MRE. It was actually produced the same time as the final year of MCI. Any calorie is better than no calorie at all. And this right here is going to give you the strength that you need to get back into the game. Oh yeah. Nachos and cheese. That's everybody's favorite. Mm. Not bad. This is one of those menus. The first thing to go the potatoes au gratin, and the M&Ms. Shortly after that, the omelet. I've come across these omelets not looking so hot. Same with the oatmeal cookie. Those things get rancid and kind of smell like, like a methane kind of smell. No joke. Mm. I forgot the hot sauce. Guess I didn't even need it. Wait a second. Chocolate apple oatmeal cookie crunch. Here, let's see what happens. You know, these M&M's, they're so versatile. You might be able to do something like this and... Mm. This is a little messy, but... I say the apple jelly on the oatmeal cookie bar is a winning combination. The only thing left to check out is the sugar-free diet soft drink mix lemonade with natural lemon flavor, artificially sweetened. Very strong in its smell. Tart, very sour. Okay. It's probably all we'll have of that. It just doesn't seem like the best pairing with the rest of the meal. You'd probably have these and this in between meals. This lemonade, which is very strong in flavor, very artificial tasting. It is quite acidic and sour, and it would just coagulate with the cheese, and it's the odd man out. And so are these, but it is intentional, I believe, to be, again, some kind of, like, in-between meals. Throw it in your pack, and that's what you open up later when you really need it. In about three or four hours, we're gonna take it over to lunch. Okay, and now we're back with lunch. Menu number nine. Good old pork chow mein. This is the first year for it. Replace chicken a la king. that. There's the main. Look at that short list of ingredients. That's, that's almost unbelievable. They don't mix the noodles in with it. That's going to be separate. Stir-fried noodles. We'll be seeing if they're in here. They should be. Oh yeah. That's my favorite one. Peaches. And the MRE crackers. Accessory packet A again. 
flameless rash in here. Probably doesn't work. Then again, who knows? We'll we'll try it out anyway. Cookie bar, chocolate covered. The one and only. Look at that thing. No delamination or anything like that. Almost guaranteed it'll be in perfect shape. Grape beverage base. Peanut butter. And then here are the noodles, chow mein. So you got your fried noodles. And the rest of the goods. Not bad. All right, let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by attempting to heat up that main. Wow, it's looking pretty good. This thing, you know, if you add salt to it, sometimes it helps. Let's, let's just do that anyway, just in case. It already has quite a bit of salt in there, like a half gram. Let's just throw a little extra in there. It sometimes assists with the exothermic reaction. We'll just set this in here for a minute. This one's actually working. Is it getting hot? Whoa, ooh, ooh, nice. Here. Okay, well that's definitely doing its thing. Let's go ahead and have some coffee. Check out that grape drink. That's like looking pretty good. Gosh, I gotta try a little of this on its own. Wow, look at that blue sugar candy, pretty much. Mm. A more authentic artificial grape flavor than the modern. The modern grape is a little bit confusing, actually. Well, there's coffee down the bottom. How about those peaches? And it is a nice looking little fruit. Cookie bar, chocolate covered. One and only. Whoa. Here. There we go. Look at that. Zero bloom to this chocolate. This stuff is built for tropical temperatures. It will not melt as easy as standard milk chocolate designed to last a long time where'd the hiss go there we go this is a nice little hiss very subtle let's check out the main oh yeah Oh. 
has a savory black pepper kind of smell. Looks like there's some celery in there. It's like a savory pork stew. That's really what it smells like. That looks outstanding for its age. I want to try this out on its own. Just a quick bite. We have water chestnut, nice lean pieces of pork, mushrooms, lots of water chestnut, and celery. This is going to have reasonable crunch on its own. Looks like black pepper in the sauce. I'd like to try the soup part here. Mushrooms that don't squeak on your teeth. That's good. Good sign. Let's try out the celery still maintained a little tiny bit of crunch this is beautifully preserved the soup that it's suspended in onion garlic fair amount of sodium hmm it's like a light gravy the pork significant chew terrific texture that's like i'm sure it's not pork loin but it's still pretty tender looks like a pork roast let's try out a water chestnut water chestnut with a tiny sliver of mushroom mm. beautiful addition of crunch and it's one of the few like thermostabilized retort pouch food items that you can do that with here what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of peanut butter to this cookie the chow mein noodles these are shelf stable fried noodles if they are still edible this is a perfectly preserved ration let's find out look at that fresh pack it looks good, not discolored. Does it smell? Absolutely fine. Look at these. Oh wow. Delectable fried noodles. They, I would just eat these on their own, but I suppose, I mean, the only thing you could do to improve it from there make a peanut sauce and with the gravy we'll mix it up on the top there peanut butter fried noodles and this mm, the peanut butter is flavorful it's like well roasted now the hot sauce get the whole thing on there That's gourmet field chow. And try some grape drink. Mm. Oh yeah. It tastes like grape juice. Let's go ahead and mix this in. Now that's a well mixed, absolutely fantastic looking meal. Time to chow down. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's almost like adding as good as it'll get for a spicy peanut sauce. And a lot of good crunch. A variation of crunch. You don't get that too often with an MRE. They're quite generous with textural enhancements in this one. Hmm. It's probably one of the better things I've eaten in this day so far. Hmm. Wow. It has celery. This is top tier. You're getting your vegetables in this. My mind is blown. 
by this one. I mean, it comes down to flavor. It's like a spicy peanut sauce. Like I said, it is savory, lightly sweet, fair amount of sodium. Again, the the soup that it is suspended in. I mean, I'm telling you, this thing, I wouldn't doubt if it had 1,200 milligrams of sodium total in this main with the things you add and everything else. Those fried noodles. Mm. That was the best bite so far. <laughs> There's a bunch of peanut butter in there. Wow. This is almost too good. That's probably why they discontinued the menu in the grape drink. You can drink this after coffee. You'll be all right. Mm. What they came up with here was truly brilliant. If you were able to take the time to mix it up like this and heat it up. Let's just try out the cookie with the peanut butter side first. Let's just live it up. It tasted like a peanut butter cup with crunch. Like if there was a cookie in the center of a peanut butter cup. That is a well roasted peanut, rich flavored peanut butter. Absolutely fantastic. Hmm. You know, you'd be hard pressed to find that much crunch in normal food, let alone shelf stable. This here, break it up in that little bottom, that like last soupy bit. You need to mix this up in with it. Let's see here. Mm. That's like a savory peanut butter cracker. Just another phase of the main course. No peanut butter left. A thick milk chocolate coating. Oatmeal biscuit cookie. Tastes like margarine or butter. Has a nice crunch. Milk chocolate coating has a little bit of a chew to it. Fair amount of emulsifier. Keeps it in form. Now for the freeze dried peaches. A sweet styrofoam crunch. It has a pronounced peach flavor. It's velvety sweet and it's almost like fruit cotton candy, but then compressed. There's one thing you can do. Check that out. The peaches mix incredibly well with the grape drink, and it's almost like a fruit smoothie. Zero change to the ration. The wet nap has a lemon detergent new car smell. A little teeny bit of leather. The gum. Bites in with some crumble, a little bit of a hard bite in. The crumble reformulates into a reasonable gum base, medium soft chew. Real sugar, peppermint flavor. Pork chow mein, 1993 to 2000. Pretty good service time, I can see why. Okay, and we're back with dinner. Menu number five, spaghetti with meat and sauce. Let's give it a look. cocoa beverage powder, got crackers, FRH, etc. 
accessory packet A. Accessory packet B will have Tootsie Rolls. Wow, look at this one. So that's the candy in this one, a little Mars bar. Solid milk chocolate. It's a tropical bar, as in it holds up to tropical temperatures. Instead of the 98 degree Fahrenheit melting temperature, it is gonna be about 120. There's your spoon, sugar-free fruit punch. Hasn't hardened up, that's good. Cheese spread, that's about the only thing. Shortest shelf life of any MRE component. First generation pound cake. For the USMRE, 1993 is your first year. And the main, spaghetti with meat and sauce. Look at that short list of ingredients. There's Parmesan cheese in there. Wonder how this is held up. Not bad. All right, let's get sat on your tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by checking out that spaghetti and heating it up. Check out this FRH, see if it's gonna work or not. You know, I added salt in the last one. That's what helped. That's always fun. This is my idea of a wild time. So many times, you know, you know, for the early ones, they just ate them cold, and they still do a lot of times. They'll just eat them cold because there's just no time to heat them up. This is the luxury. You know, you might not even have the water to spare. You know, the ounce or whatever it is of water that you need to activate the seven and a half or so grams of material, the magnesium, iron, and sodium combination. Let's check out the coffee. Make sure it's not a mess. Oh, it looks good. There we go. It looks okay. much needed right now. Pound cake. Look on the back. It says, oh, uh, that's okay. Vanilla. First generation. MRE pound cake. I can't even believe it. There's no crystallization or very little. Wow, that smells fantastic. Look at this thing. Isn't that a beaut? Look at the fresh pack. No discoloration. No, like, cake sticking to it. Nothing like that. This is just something you never really see. Very uncommon. Look at just the tiny bit of recrystallization of sugar. And it's a well-baked piece of cake. Hang on for the Mars bar. This thing, yeah, that's normal. A little bit of bloom. Look at that. Fat separation. Nice hits. The cheese spread. Probably will smell like a gym sock. We'll see though. Well, <laughs> it doesn't look very normal at all. Mmm, gourmet. Oh, it smells gourmet, too. Well, I mean, hey, you know, there's absolutely no way I'm going to be trying any of this out. Let's go ahead and check out some more Army Mocha. Look at the color on it. It's quite light in color. Hmm. A light, grainy, slightly demoralizing Army Mochaccino. 
Gosh, there's barely anything in that pack. Oh, jeez, this stuff. Okay. Great for when you gotta purify water that's that coming out of a river and you don't want it to look quite as unappealing as it will. Let's check out that pound cake. Hmm. There's a slight recrystallization of sugar on the outer surface that gives it an additional a little crispy crunch, like a glazed donut. That is a doughy, slightly chewy vanilla cake with a, mmm. Almost like, you know how Captain Crunch has that film, like residue that it leaves behind? It has a little of that going on. A bit more dense than the modern pound cake, the fruit punch. Wow. Mmm. Well, it is um, quite artificial and... Mm. menacing in its artificial cherry watermelon flavor that I just think that to each their own. I'm sure there's somebody out there that loves it. Why not go ahead and check out the bloomed chocolate? That's just surface bloom. Look at the inside. Hold on. Mmm. As for flavor, it's like a milk chocolate with some sort of... What is that that they put in there anyway? I mean, it's just like a flavoring that is uncalled for, right? This is some of the worst chocolate I've ever had. Look at it. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, here, on. It doesn't look too bad. But flavor-wise, it's a, it's a tad bit sour tasting, and that is normal. This was just very unappealing chocolate. Look how it doesn't melt. No melt. Yeah, it's piping hot. How's the spaghetti gonna look and smell? Parmesan cheese in it. Little to no preservatives. If they're in it, they're not listed on the ingredients. Gosh, that smells homemade. Or like cafeteria homemade, but like fresh. That smells so good. The Parmesan cheese is like, and garlic, and like a fresh beef. All right, there we go. No off colors, no off odors. Visually and scent-wise, it is absolutely fantastic. Good amount of beef. The sauce is pretty thick. <sighs> fresh, well, canned. A fresh canned tomato smell. Hmm. Minced or ground beef. Some large pieces with reasonable chew. At least just as good as a brand new one. The tomato sauce isn't sour, nor is the Parmesan cheese. The crackers, wow. The malted barley with that crunch accentuates the tomato sauce. It's like some kind of chips and dip. The tomato sauce, it hasn't oxidized. It didn't get darker. This main would, would be like really dark red, like brown, like a dark red brown. It is important to understand the value of this ration. This thing is built to last if stored properly, at least the old ones. I don't know about these newer ones, we'll see. I don't know, with the removal of hydrogenated oil, you know, trans fat, this might be it. a desert storm veteran 
I talked to, he said he'd mix the spaghetti with the corned beef hash and make a meal out of the two mains, mix them. Imagine that. Just all the things you'd be doing after eating it a bunch of times. So that was a 24 hour set of some 1993 MREs in super nice condition. This thing was unrivaled. For 1993, it was way ahead of its time, and having the flameless ration heater meant that a soldier could heat up their meal without producing any flame. No fire required. What an experience. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.